thank you very much to the conveners of this group for inviting me to present today. I'm delighted to be talking about early diagnosis and treatment of autism. I have conflicts of interest related to royalties from publishers and honorary for various talks. I want to begin by acknowledging my colleagues. The work I'm sharing is from a very large team of people who've been working together for 30 years or more for some of us. But I particularly want to acknowledge Sally Ozanoff, Lori Vismara, Greg Young, Geraldine Dawson, Annette Estes, Kathy Lord, and Annette Fitzpatrick for um, our collaborative work and all that I have learned from them. I want to focus on three topics today, uh, all involving children with autism who are younger than two years of age. We'll begin by talking about recent findings in early detection, early diagnosis of autism then proceed to recent findings in early intervention research for children younger than three, and then end with implications for treatment and for clinical work in this population. <coughs> Starting with early detection, as everyone in this room undoubtedly knows, there's a tremendous um, urgency right now to detecting <coughs> autism earlier. And one of the reasons for this urgency comes from studies like this one from David Mandel, published in 2005, which demonstrates the gap in time between the time in which parents first report concerns about their children at the age of 18 to 19 months, and the time of diagnosis now, this is based on recent American data, um, but even so, the mean age of diagnosis for these 1,000 children occurred between 34 and 61 months. For children with autistic disorder, they were recognized the soonest, but they were almost four years of age on average. For children with milder forms of autism spectrum disorders, age of diagnosis ranged from four until eight years. This represents a gap in time between the time of symptom development and the time of recognition and the possibility of early treatment. And this gap ranges from two and a half to six years or more. This is, becomes more and more concerning as evidence from early intervention studies demonstrate um, or hint at the fact that the earlier intervention begins, the better chance there is for a larger gains that children can make over time. And so this goal to improve outcomes, to reduce um, the cost of autism for people with autism, for their families and for society, to improve the quality of life of people with autism, <coughs> hinges on this point in time of recognizing autism early and beginning treatment. And so we have a great press to understand the development of early autism. This challenge has been um, helped along tremendously by a group of researchers all, from all over the world who are studying infant siblings of children with autism from the time of birth or soon after and following these babies along, because, as you all know, there's an increased rate of autism in siblings, about 15%. And um, so knowing that this is a high-risk group, we have a better chance of finding more children with autism if we begin at birth and follow along till age three, if we're working with a high-risk group, like siblings. This is a list of the names of the investigators that have been funded both by their countries and by Autism Speaks to come together, share their data, and understand the earliest signs of autism. Um, let me skip that slide. And so I want to focus on several findings which I think are the most important findings to have emerged in the last three or four years since the last Autism Europe conference. 
and the first one of those is the surprising lack of behavioral differences at six months of age in children who later develop autism. This was first reported by our Canadian colleagues, headed by Lani Zweigenbaum in 2004, and by Nuri Irmia in Israel and her colleagues in 2006. But this has now been replicated by several other groups, including Becky Landa and our own work in California. Um, so, uh, so there is a convergence of findings that for children who do have autism by the age of two or three, careful uh, examination of their behavior in testing situations and interactions does not demonstrate symptoms of the autism that is coming. And so I wanted to, sh to show you the onset patterns of 13 children from California who developed autism in the first three years of our study. And I want this uh, diagnosis involves the best estimates by expert raters using ADOS, ADI, and clinical observation and all um, psychometric data. I want to start here at 36 months in the final column. So read this from right to left. At 36 months, all 13 children have a diagnosis of autism. But if we look at the same children at 24 months, almost half of them do not yet have enough symptoms to diagnose. Eight are uh, diagnosed by 24 months. Five of them do not yet meet diagnostic criteria. If we look back at the same children at 18 months, only three of them have enough symptoms to diagnose autism although all of them are raising clinical concerns of some sort. And if we look at 12 months of age, the minority of children have any concerning symptoms. Uh, only five of these 11 are raising any concerns, and none of them are raising autism-specific symptomology at this point. Now, know that at 12 months, we now have good diagnostic tools. We can diagnose autism at this age range, and autism is quite stable. So what this demonstrates is this very slow, um, gradual onset of symptoms, and the gradual increase in symptom number and symptom uh, severity beginning at 12 months, none of these children showed concerns. One, only one of the five we saw at six months showed any concerns. So there's this gradual development, no concerns, no concerns, concerns, diagnosis. And most of the children are presenting this way. This is not what we thought we would see when we entered this kind of work. Now I want to show you what the developmental scores of these children are like. This shows you 30 children with autism who will develop autism and 80 children with typical development um, gathered from the combined study of UC Davis and UCLA, Sally Ozanoff, Marion Sigmund, Ted Hutman, and myself. These are the Mullen scores of the typically developing babies at, for language, receptive and expressive, at 6, 12, 18, 24, and 36 months. Uh, and so we see a fairly steady developmental trajectory. These are the uh, scores of the children who develop autism at the same ages. And what you see is normal development at six months, which starts to separate by 12 and is significantly different at 12, and increases to decelerate 18 to 18 months at which point it stabilizes. So here we see these are the same children over time who are decelerating from a normal developmental rate to an, uh, a slowed rate by the age of uh, two. These are the same children. This is motor development. And we see the same pattern. Here's the children with typical development. Here are the children who will develop autism. Normal motor development at six months beginning significant but small differences at 12 with increasingly larger gaps over time. There is no regression in this sample. Not one child lost skills. 
This is a deceleration of previously normal patterns in all of the children. Now we're looking at social data uh, rated through at social interactions with an experimenter during a set um, task on the Mullins. This is not microanalyzed, this is just analyzed from video. And we're seeing the same kind of pattern. This is decrease in the number of gazes to the adult per minute from normal ranges at six months, increasing gaps from 12, 18, 24 to 36 months. This is the number of smiles per minute, the same picture. This is the number of directed vocalizations per minute, same scenario. This is the quality of social engagement that the blind experimenter rates at the end of two hours of interaction. It seems normal at the first visit and falls off steadily through this entire period, which means that the onset doesn't occur at one point in time. Onset is a gra appears to be a gradual process that is going on across this whole three years. Here are the parents' reports. And what we see here are that at six months, the parents of children uh, who are risk families, have a brother or sister with autism, are slightly elevated, more elevated than the parents of children with typical development, but there are no significant differences at six months in their worries about onset of autism. By 12 months, those children who will develop autism, the parents are significantly more concerned. And, and they grow increasingly more concerned over time. This is the exact same pattern the parents are reporting that I just showed you in our behavioral data and in our developmental data. So what does this mean about the onset of autism? It could mean that autism sets on in a gradual way and that the beginning of autism, when it starts, when this process starts, may be a chance occurrence. Um, the, this is the way that it, that it happens in schizophrenia. And my colleague Cam Carter suggested that the genetics of schizophrenia results in a kind of a, um, this bell-shaped curve of onset and that this may also fit best what we're seeing in autism. If this is true, and if onset is happening here for most of the children of a behavioral disorder, then looking here for the signs of it may not be possible. We may not be able to find behaviors associated with autism before autism onsets, which for most children with autism would be here in the 12 to 18 month period. So the third finding from this work that flows from this, if the autism is not uh, observable in behavior, perhaps we'll find it by going more deeply into cognitive processes that underlie behavior, trying to get closer to measures of brain function. And there have been a tremendous number of studies in the last few years that are taking this route in the infant sibling studies and are identifying important differences that occur when you look at a whole group of infant siblings compared to a group of typically developing infants of the same age. And so we have papers um, from Ibanez, from the British group, and from Nolan looking at um, response patterns to gaze, response patterns to direct gaze, exploration of mother's faces, the ability to disengage from looking at faces or objects, um, children's memory for objects, infants, nine months, six months, 10 months. And these uh, studies are finding reliable differences in more basic processes. Although these are also mostly nine month olds, um, whether we'll find them in the three to six month period I think is not clear, although I think it's probably likely that we will find some of these differences.